let, let's ask the, the, the question that's in vogue at the moment when it comes to Hong Kong. Is the dollar peg under threat at this stage as a result of these tensions? Uh, so I, like every other analyst, will tell you that no, the Hong Kong dollar peg is not under threat. I think it's important to remember that although uh, the new NPC law on security does raise constitutional questions about one country, two systems, uh, from a financial and economic perspective, one country, two systems will continue. Both the Hong Kong SAR government and the mainland Chinese government still are saying that uh, one country, two systems will continue and that this law is meant to perfect or improve uh, the constitutional concerns. So from their perspective, there's no real reason to break the peg. I think if the U.S. does revoke Hong Kong's special trading status, you will see some outflows. But those outflows are things that uh, the HKMA could uh, deal with since they do have 440 billion of FX reserves. That's twice as much as the total Hong Kong dollars in circulation. So unlike Black Wednesday in 1992, where traders were basically able to force the Bank of England to break uh, the sterling uh, attachment to the Deutsche Mark, there's no way that the market could force uh, the HKMA to depeg the Hong Kong dollar at this point, since the HKMA has too much money. Right. Right, yeah, the reserves are significant in Hong Kong, certainly. Uh, in, in terms of the offshore yuan, we've talked about these different scenarios now for Trump and his team. He could be looking at targeted measures. He could be looking at removing that special trading status for Hong Kong. Talk us through your forecasts for the yuan, according to those and in line with some of those potential options for Trump. Sure. Well, if, the, if Trump does keep uh, things targeted, and let's say he only targets or sanctions specific Chinese uh, officials, individual officials, and he does not focus on economic consequences uh, for China or for Hong Kong, then I do think dollar CNH will not break 720 in the short term, and that will probably settle between uh, around 7.15 to 7.18 in the short term. Uh, but if he does decide to raise tariffs or uh, surprise the market by actually sanctioning financial firms operating in Hong Kong, then I do think dollar CNH will definitely uh, start approaching 725, at which point uh, the central bank, the PBOC, will probably step in and try to start signaling more uh, CNY stability either through the fix or through outright selling of USD in order to stabilize the yuan. All right. Well, Max, it seems like 720 is that sort of line the sand everyone's watching out for. What, what are the spillover effects then for, for the rest of the region? Are, are you, what sort of high beta currencies that are linked to the yuan you think could actually be vulnerable? Well, as we saw in 2019, I think you will see continued uh, linkage between the Korean won and the Chinese won, especially if uh, Trump does ratchet up things on the trade front and raises new tariffs. So we all know that uh, Korea has a lot of trade linkages uh, to China and the U.S. via the tech supply chain. So if those goods get more expensive, the market will start pricing in uh, more weakness for the Korean won. That said, I do think that the volatility uh, for Korea will be much less than what we saw in March when you did have that big USD squeeze and that demand for, uh, for dollar assets. Uh, since the Fed has already injected a lot of liquidity into the system, I do think that the volatility will remain a little bit more subdued this time. So although uh, the yuan is in for a, uh, a choppy uh, few weeks, I don't think it will be as bad as what we did see in March. Yeah, and I'm looking at dollar yen, Max. I know you look at EM, but, but we've been stuck in that 107 handle, and some are saying that perhaps this is just a sign of complacency, that we're not seeing that type of haven buying. Uh, take a look at the, the Asia FX that you cover. Are there currencies that are, are still underpricing the risk of these rising tensions? Uh, I do think it is interesting that the yen is unstable. And I, and I think uh, that has, has to do in part with the fact that uh, U.S. equities seem to be, for the most part, ignoring what's going on in, uh, in China and the, and the U.S. So I think as long as you get uh, a U.S. market, which is mostly focused on uh, the reopening of U.S. businesses and the reopening of states. And I do think the S&P will be stable and dollar yen will also be stable because we all know that the yen correlates very highly with the uh, with U.S. equities. In Asia, I don't think other currencies will be as impacted as what we are seeing in North Asia. Um, I do think that South Asian currencies do have some scope to strengthen if risk sentiment does remain positive on U.S. reopening. And I'm thinking that the Indonesian rupiah can actually get a little bit stronger. Uh, since Bank Indonesia has been quite hawkish and has signaled that it does want a stronger rupiah, uh, I do think that as long as uh, Fed liquidity and dollar liquidity is uh, ample, then I do think that slowly but surely the rupiah can strengthen further. Well, well, Max, staying then in Southeast Asia, what are your forecasts then for the Thai baht? Because that's been under pressure as well. It's down, what, about 7% year-to-date against the U.S. dollar. Of course, COVID is a big factor. Tourism has dried up, essentially. Uh, what is the outlook for that currency? 
Sure. I actually like to, the bot to weaken further, although it has strengthened quite substantially since uh, the lows that we saw in March. So as you point out, tourism is a big driver of what goes on in Thailand. And in 2018, it accounted for around 20 percent of total Thai GDP. And now that tourism has, is at a standstill, basically, uh, there's no avoiding the fact that Thailand will probably enter a pretty sharp recession on the back of uh, this. However, I think the market recently has been a little bit more constructive on Thailand because it has been able to maintain its uh, COVID-19 cases uh, quite on the low level. And the fact that they're starting to reopen means that the, some of the domestic services economy can resume. So although I'm a little bit more bearish spot and still think that it has scope to weaken, I do think that was a consensus trade uh, in March and April and that some of the unwinds probably didn't anticipate that you do have some shoots of good news in Thailand, even though tourism will remain weak. And you talked about a choppy few weeks ahead for the Korean won. Uh, obviously, Taiwan is a very trade-exposed uh, province, island, country, whatever you want to call it. Uh, to what extent is there a divergence, though, between the Taiwan dollar uh, and the won when it comes to some of those trade pressures? Yeah, I think the Taiwan dollar is an interesting point uh, that you bring up. I do think that although Taiwan is vulnerable and also exposed to the, the U.S.-China supply chain, just like Korea is, you actually are seeing some anecdotal signs of substitution where as uh, invest or whereas the multinational companies realign their supply chains outside of China, they are looking into going into Taiwan. So in 2019, the Taiwan data actually held up quite well, despite what was going on with the trade war. And I do think that trend uh, will be able to set to continue. On top of that, you do have a Taiwanese government that actually has been done an excellent job in terms of uh, containing the COVID outbreak and the COVID situation in Taiwan, where you basically have no new cases for almost a month now. So. The fact that the services economy in Taiwan will continue means that the Taiwan dollar should outperform the Korean won. So I actually like to go along the Taiwan dollar against short the Korean won.